Hey yo hoy yo everyone! Been a long time coming, but I finally got my copy of Rhythm of War. I went on a quest to go find it at my last address because I accidentally shipped it there, but I've got it. I thought for a little bit that I really want to continue this Everything We Know series if the book is already out, and I concluded I bet that there's tons of people who haven't even started this book yet. And I figured that anything that I'm saying in these videos is 95% to 99% canon anyway, and anything we would get out of Rhythm of War is just more confirmation or more knowledge. And of course I'll just be doing more videos on on expanding on this knowledge set afterwards. I mean, it's another 400,000 words. I can't even fathom how much more information we're about to get in this series. I can't wait. But for now, I still think there are a few areas of knowledge that are hard to track in these books. This video is going to be focusing on the secret societies on Roshar. Way back a millennia ago, when all we had to worry about was that missing Malaysian Airlines flight, 2014, I think they called it, Brandon Sanderson said that there were nine active secret societies on Roshar. Now, we aren't 100% certain what all nine are for which societies he's referring to here. Who's in them? What are they doing? And you know, names get tossed around so damn often that when they show up at a more important time in the book, it's hard to recall if this is a new character on the scene or if we saw them mentioned way back in like chapter five of Words of Radiance or something like that. So let's remedy that. We got major spoiler warnings for all things Stormlight up to and through Dawn Shard, but nothing about Rhythm of War in this video because I haven't even read it. That's what I'm gonna be doing the minute this camera goes off. I'm gonna be disappearing off into my cave, hibernating like a bear, but instead of energy, I'll be gaining knowledge. So with that spoiler warning, Let's jump right into it with one of the confirmed groups, but still just as secretive as ever, the 17th Shard. The 17th Shard are a non-interventionalist world hopping group that are mostly focused on research. Their influence stretches through most, if not all of the Cosmere. We know that while they aren't actively working with the Ghostbloods, they do have interactions with Ghostbloods throughout their excursions in the Cosmere, and the Ghostbloods have actually sniped some of their members before. Notable members of the 17th Shard are Demo, a seer from Skadriel, Galadon, an Elantrian from Cell, and Bayon, a user of the Sand Magics from Taldane. It seems like their current only known goal is hunting down Hoid, which makes sense for a non-interventionalist group trying to rein in Hoid, doing his Hoid thing all over the place. Ironically, they are the ones who brought the common cold to Roshar, probably thrashing their weak little immune systems as we speak. The disease might be a big problem in Rhythm of War, and it's kind of unfortunate the timing of this book coming out and the times we live in, but so it goes. Anyway, we know that the 17th Shard will be way more significant in later books and we've really only gotten one interlude with them as it currently stands, though Bayon does appear in White Sand, which makes sense, he's from Taldane. He does interact with Chris here, who's a big world hopper character. She's had some kind of hand in founding the Silverlight University. She's also a writer of all the Ars Arcanums in the back of the book. We've gotten information from Brandon that if anyone knows the most about the goings-ons of the Cosmere, it's Chris. She knows even more than Hoyd, even though he might make it seem like she doesn't. I don't think we're gonna see much of the 17th Shard in this book, maybe in an interlude, but I doubt it, but I'd keep your eyes Peeled. Next up, we got the Sons of Honor. We know a bit more about them than other secret societies. They believe that the return of the Voidbringers will be a return of the Heralds, and by extension, that will be a return of Voronism to being a powerhouse religion in the world. Notable members, we got Gavilar, who's dead, Amaram, who's dead, and Restares, who has been mentioned lightly. Gavilar was in the group mainly as a leech of their resources. He was doing his own thing and they kind of aligned with him in some ways, so he hopped in, helped them out a bit, and then used them to his own extents. So it's likely he wasn't totally subscribed to these ideas that he was helping them with. Amaram was recruited by Gavilar and then got killed. He was doing some things there, but nothing super impactful. But Rastaraz seems to be the super secretive head of this whole group. And we haven't gotten a lot about him. He's been mentioned here and there. And I've seen a theory floated around that that could be Kallik, one of the Heralds. I don't know if it's a great theory because we don't have much to go on, but until it's deconfirmed, I'm subscribed to it. Sounds funny. I mean, the Heralds gotta be doing something. They gotta be doing some kind of day job while they're out here just slowly going crazy. I expect that we're gonna see a lot of the Sons of Honor in Rhythm of War. They've been bubbling to the surface for a while now. And with two of their big players dead, I think that this might be their book, if only to to finish them off once and for all. I expect that we're probably going to see the ultimate group's leader here and we'll be able to understand truly who Rastaras is. Though I think that Iolai Sadius might actually be one of the big players here. Her bringing Amaram into the Sadius family and making him High Prince for that small amount of time until he got killed by Rock. Let's go! It seems like there's something going on there. I also think that she would make a really good B-plot enemy for Rhythm of War and it just kind of makes sense. While everyone else is dealing with Odium, she's there in the background and maybe finally after four books, the Sons of Honor get dealt with as well. And 
and maybe ILI gets taken down with them. The third group that I definitely think Brandon was referring to in this nine is, you know, he's talking in 2014. We've already got it confirmed. It was the Skybreakers. I have a whole video talking about all of the orders and the Skybreakers weren't just a name filling in the order. They were in fact just the order. So check that out if you want to see more about them. I'm not going to talk about them here. We already know what they are and what's up with them. After them is probably the followers of the diagram, made by Mr. T, the Night Health Mohawk himself, King of Carbranth, Tara Vangian. He believes that he was cursed by the Night Watcher, but by way of word of Brandon, we actually know that he was cursed by Preservation herself. This curse consists of his intelligence and his empathy being inversely related on any given day. So at the height of his intelligence, he lacks all empathy for people, and when he is the most empathetic for his people, he has soup for brains. On arguably his most intelligent day ever, he created the diagram which was a plan meant to save his people from the devastation that was coming. Teravangian and Malata are the big players here, the old king and his Dustbringer buddy. There are a few others mentioned when talking about the diagram, like Mral, but I don't think they're very big players compared to Mr. T and his Dustbuster. At the end of Oathbringer, he cuts a deal with Odium. And just side note, Odium was genuinely impressed by what Teravangian was doing with the diagram and noted that he was specifically impressed that he didn't even use any capital F fortune when he made this, which is a big Cosmere term for kind of future sight, though we haven't seen anyone actually use it to any extent yet. Anyway, the deal he cut was that the people of Carbranth, the city itself, any humans born into it and their spouses would be safe from Odium. Now, that's important because there's a theory going around that Kaladin's mom is from Carbranth. Looking at Liren's timeline, he did spend some time in the Frostlands and specifically Carbranth. We know that Kaladin's mom is not from Alethkar. I think this will be really funny if it plays out. I just want to see Angry Odium. I think it'll be hilarious. He'll be like Professor Quirrell in Harry Potter 1 where he's like, oh, what is this magic? It's going to be really funny. I think it's going to be amazing. I really hope it's true. And hopefully it's more of a freak out than even when Dalinar refused to give him his pain. The Ghostbloods are the last guaranteed secret society on Roshar. We don't really know what their ultimate goals are. They have world hoppers in their ranks, so getting off world isn't a problem. Their goals have previously aligned with the Knight's Radiant, so they're probably not against the Knight's Radiant. They wanted to find Urthiru, they wanted to cleanse it of Reshafir, the Midnight Mother, and Mraze has purposefully helped Shalash by giving her information about where Talonel is. We know their next goal is to have Shalan somehow convince Sia Anat to go against Odium and help them in whatever their plans are, and I'm interested to see how they intend to use her powers and to what extent they want them for, but we don't know anything else about that right now, and that's probably going to be one of the main through lines for Shallan in Rhythm of War. Theta Car is a character that we haven't really seen, but he's been mentioned by numerous other characters throughout Stormlight. He's a leader of the Ghost Bloods. Brandon Sanderson made sure to make that clear that he wasn't the leader of the Ghost Bloods, so perhaps he's the leader of the Rosharan Ghost Bloods, but there are other sects of them elsewhere that he's not in charge of. Gavilar sees him as the head of the Ghost Bloods. When he's about to die, he refers to Theta Car and his ghost bloods. So, so there's that. We don't get much else about him other than a few mentions, and Mraze makes it clear that he's below Theta Car in the rankings. Ayatil is a world hopper and Mraze's master. She's originally from the Silverlight Academy, though she has Southern Skadrian ancestry, and the mask that she wears is from the Hunter Nation. She was at one time a member of the 17th Shard until the Ghost Blood sniped her. They uh they got her on the I don't know, she was like first pick of the draft or something. First first pick round one. I don't they got her now. She's doing stuff for them instead of the other team. Maybe she wanted more adventure, maybe she wanted more impact on the world. She was going to, who knows. Mraze is Roshar and born, but he's also a world hopper. We know that Mraze is in fact not his name, but a title. We know based on him referring to Ayatil as his Bapsk that she, he's probably Thalen. His current location is the one that we know most about. After Urathiru has been taken, he's kind of sneaks his way into Ayali's inner circle of guards, and it's super likely that he's the Scarred Guard. The Scarred Guard, not Scars Guard. He's not an it. He just carries the chair in for her at the first meeting of the leaders in Dalinar's alliance. Like I said, they're major players. They have been. It kind of makes sense when a major POV of the whole series is also having major ties to the Ghost Bloods. So expect way more of them in Rhythm of War. And maybe we'll get some more information on either their leadership, other members. Maybe we'll see Ayatil. Or maybe we'll figure out what it is they want. Who knows? Now we're going to venture into a bit more of the guessing territory for these. The Invisagers are one of the groups that has been mentioned, but they aren't around anymore based on what we know. This is the group that Teft's family was a part of. Part of. They agreed in theory with the Sons of Honor that the Voidbringers coming back would bring back the Heralds and also the Knights Radiant, and they idolized the Knights Radiant, but this is all we really know about them. 
The big question marks come from when Teft informed his city lord that his parents were Invisagers. He had them all killed. He had every Invisager in the town killed, and those were all we knew about. Maybe there's some small group of them out there, but right now there are none. I can't imagine they're gonna be nothing. It feels really weird to have this group talk about them, give them a character who has them in their backstory, and then drop that ball. And Brandon Sanderson doesn't seem the type to do that, so I think we're gonna see them. Maybe not here. At most, maybe in an interlude we might get something that mentions them, but look out for them coming in the future. The World Singers are another group that could potentially be one of the secret societies. They travel the world collecting knowledge and they see themselves as better storytellers than a traditional storyteller. Hoyt is a master world singer, surprise, surprise, and Sigzel, one of the members of Bridge 4, recently became a full world singer after training under Hoyt. They are potentially related to the Mistborn Terrace world bringers. They're the group of scholars and researchers who tried to cultivate copper mines. That was, of course, before the Lord Ruler yeeted them from this mortal coil. The origin of the two groups' names is related. That much we know from a word of Brandon. Perhaps Hoyt founded both, but... Right now, it's read and find out, and I really hope that we read and find out soon more about them, because they seem interesting, they seem really cool. I think the information that we get from Dawnshard about the Sleepless fills out the last two slots of these nine secret groups nicely. Perhaps it feels a bit too nice, but sometimes things just work out like that. The main Sleepless organization obviously has the goal of protecting the Dawn Shard at all costs. Even though they don't like to do it, they are even okay with killing people to make sure that the Dawn Shard doesn't get into anyone's hands. Didn't work out too great. We can actually see that they are easier to reason with than one might assume, as Risen is able to convince them that this is a better solution than just keeping it here and killing off anyone that comes to their island. The Sleepless are weird. The Sleepless are gross. I hate bugs, but we do know that the Sleepless are not from Roshar, we know that they are found on other planets, but something weird about them is the Sleepless specific to Roshar are the only ones that are able to come together to mimic people. There are currently 24 swarms on Roshar, 20 of which are a part of this Dawnshard protection team. Of them, one of the more notable members is Nickly, who is the youngest of the swarms. He is swarm 24 out of 24, now it's probably on the bottom of his foot somewhere. Being one of the youngest, he's also the one who is easiest to adapt to people. He has the easiest time fitting in with them. This also is likely why they were able to be more reasonable with Risen than perhaps before Nickly was around, because they might not have totally understood where people are coming from and how they fit into this situation and make the world a bit of a muddier place than the Sleepless would like it to be. At one point, we know that the Sleepless were able to surge bind, though they might not like doing it, and they may have even fought either alongside or against the Radiance during a har Arietium. A Harietium? Aha Rietium. I don't know how to pronounce words. <laughs> Dalinar notices a heap of burnt up Kremlings in one of his visions, but we just have no idea what side they were on during this. The other group of Sleepless are referred to by the main 20 swarms as the true traitors. We don't have any explanation as to why they are referred to as such. We don't really know what their goals are, but we do know that Arklo, who is also one of these swarms, is not a part of these true traitors. He has some ideals that go against what the main 20 swarms are. It seems like they don't really like like his direct contact with the Knights Radiant, and because of this they see him more as an outsider, but they don't hate him like they seem to hate these true traitors. Perhaps we'll see more of them, but I think that we're gonna see more of the Sleepless like way later on in the Cosmere's timeline, and they just happen to be on Roshar right now, but they're not gonna make themselves manifest in Rhythm of War for sure. There we have it, nine secret societies. Hopefully these are the right ones. We know like five of them for sure, but you know, anything's up for grabs in the Brandon Sanderson verse. He's got so much floating on his head. Hopefully this was helpful for you going into Rhythm of War, and hopefully some of my things that I predicted here might come true. I don't know. I really want to see Ayali die. Oh, it'd be so good. Please, please, I hate her so much. If you found this useful, if you found it entertaining, please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. I want to thank you so much for checking out this video. Comment below what you think about the secret societies. I hope you have a great day. Stay lit.